What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchUpEssentials.com. So in today's video, we're gonna talk through all of the different tools contained inside of Fredo 6's scaling extension, Fredo Scale. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so you download Fredo Scale by going to the Sketchication plugin store. One thing to note about this is Fredo Scale used to be a free extension. Now it's a paid extension. It's a one-time payment and you can either get that one-time payment um, by purchasing the perpetual license for $12 or what I usually recommend, I think this is totally worth it, is going for the Fredo 6 bundle. So the Fredo 6 bundle contains other extensions as well like Curveloft, um, it contains Joint Push Pull, a bunch of Fredo 6's extensions. So I generally recommend going with that bundle, but if you do just want Fredo Scale, you can get it for $12 at Sketchication. Um, one other thing to note, if you are looking for some other SketchUp extensions, make sure you check out my Ultimate SketchUp Extensions Guide, which I will link to in the notes down below. That gives you links to all of the extensions that I've done tutorials on, as well as um, links to tutorials showing you how to use them and what they're for. So if you are looking for a specific SketchUp extension, you're gonna wanna check that out. Um, I will link to that in the notes down below, or you can check it out at the sketchupessentials.com slash extensions. But the way Fredo Scale works is it's got a number of tools built in designed to help you um, do different scaling operations inside of SketchUp. And so when you first open it up, it's going to look something like this. And so there's a number of different tools that do different things. So if you do wanna see more of like a description, you can toggle this first button, which is gonna be Fredo 6's launcher. That's gonna give you the ability to um, access any of these tools right here, as well as toggle on some additional tools in that toolbar. So um, I think you do have to restart SketchUp for those to show up, uh, but there are a couple other tools in here that aren't on by default. Um, note that there are a couple settings that you can adjust in here as well, like the color of the wireframe, uh, live deformation, other things like that. So you can get to those inside of the settings right here. I rarely use those, but they are in there in case you're looking for them. Okay, so this first tool is one that stumped me for a while as to why I would even want it. Um, it's basically just Fredo Scale's box scaling tool. Um, and when you first activate it, it looks a lot like the scale tool in SketchUp. So if I just tap on it to activate it, notice how you get the same bounding box. It does the same looking thing in here like this. So it doesn't look all that different, but there's a couple valuable things in here um, that you're gonna wanna know about with this tool. So the first is, remember with the scale tool that it orients based on the bounding box of your object. Well, your bounding box of your object is set based on your model axes. So if we take this chair model, for example, notice how the axes are moving in this direction. Well, the problem with that is if I tap the S key to use the typical SketchUp scale tool, notice how it's not scaling along the actual direction of the chair, right? It's kind of scaling in this like weird diagonal direction. What this tool does is it'll automatically find the geometry that's inside of your object and it'll actually Actually orient your scale box based on that rather than the model axes or the model bounding box, meaning you can use this to scale an object like this in the proper direction. So it does that kind of like automatic orientation right there. So the other thing that I like better about this tool than the SketchUp tool is, let's say for example that you were drawing lines on a surface, right? And we wanted to close them in like this, well, no big deal if you manage to draw them all on the same plane, right? But a lot of the time, we'll end up with some kind of a model where something is off by like just a little bit, you know, something like this. So we'll go ahead and erase this out. And so let's say that we had drawn these in here and these weren't 100% flat, right? Well, the problem now is if I come in here and start redrawing edges, it's never going to put a, a face in here because this is off by a little bit, which for this particular tool, not a big deal, or for this particular situation, it's not a big deal, right? Because you could just redraw this. But if you brought like a CAD file in or something like that, it can get really frustrating trying to track that down. Well, what this tool does that the SketchUp scale tool doesn't do is it allows you to scale to zero. And so what that means is let's say that I wanted this to be flat. Right? So if I tap the S key, notice how we've got this bounding box that kind of shows that this object isn't flat. Well, what I want to do is I want to take this and type in a value of zero right here. Well, notice how SketchUp doesn't let you scale in direction to zero. Well, the uh, 
the box scaling tool does, which is super valuable. So if I click on this, right, and then I click on this button right here, and I type in a value of zero, that allows me to scale this to zero on the Z axis. Well now, if I draw over one of these edges, they're all flat and I can get the face in here. So the ability to scale to zero is super valuable in my opinion, especially if you're importing geometry or something like that. Okay, so next up, we've got the box tapering function. What the box tapering function does is it puts a bounding box around your object and it allows you to select one of the sides um, like this. So notice how if I mouse over this, it's picking the sides and it allows you to add a taper based on that one side of the object, right? So it's basically taking this top surface and it's just scaling that one and everything else is just making your object taper like this. Note that you can tap the control key in order to go to an about center as well. So you can't do this with the SketchUp scale tool, right? It doesn't work the same way. So if you were to come in here and try to do that right now, notice how it's going to scale the entire object while this allows you to scale part of it. Now you could come in here and scale this surface and get a similar result for sure, um, but that really gets kind of tricky if you're working with more complex shapes. So let's say for example, and honestly, I don't use this tool all that much if I'm uh, being realistic, but it is good to know that it's in here. What this does is this allows us to pick one side of the object bounding box like this, and it allows us to taper it. So notice how I could use this in order to taper this down in order to add a little bit more of like a curve to my slide or something like that. Um, this is a tool that could definitely be useful for doing that kind of thing. Like I said, I don't use this one all that much, but it is in there. Now the next one's a bit more interesting to me. So um, it acts in kind of a similar way, but while this one only scales one side, this other one does a box shear. So what that means is that means that we're gonna be able to click on this, right, to do a box shear. Notice how we're getting that same kind of selection in here when we mouse over the different faces, faces. but what this is gonna do is instead of just scaling that one side, it's actually going to shear the object based on that bounding box, right? So basically you're able to move this entire end and it's going to kind of automatically add that shear in here. Note that if you tap the control key, you can set it so that it does that about center and then your bottom point isn't fixed, it's scaling and shearing around that point as well. And so you could use this for something like this shape right here. So let's say we wanted to give this a little bit of movement this direction. We could use this box plane shearing in order to kind of shear it over like this. So again, know how it's going to do that right here. And then we could use it again in order to shear in this other direction right here. So I'm gonna click on this and I can use it in order to kind of shear this object over so I can add kind of this like forward movement in here, just like this. So if you do wanna do some kind of a shear this could be a good tool for that. We do have this other op option in here, which is your free planar shearing. I have not been able to really use this to get super coherent results, but basically what this one does is instead of using the box plane, it allows you to set your own plane like this, and then you can click, you can set a target point, and you can use it in order to add a shear to this object. So um, you can use more of a point and a direction in order to shear something instead. So like I said, this one hasn't necessarily been one that I've really used. I find the box shearing to be a little bit more interesting. If you see an interesting application for this uh, this free planar shearing, let me know because I'd love to hear about it in the comments down below. Okay, so there's two functions inside of Fredo Scale that I use all of the time that I absolutely love. This is one of them. So um, this tool is called box stretching. Basically what box stretching does is it allows you to stretch an object based on a point that you dictate. So let's say for example, we've got this cabinet that I downloaded from the 3D warehouse. If I was to come in here with the SketchUp scale tool and scale it, notice what it's gonna do is it's going to distort everything in this object, object, right? So not necessarily what we want because we wanna keep these boards the same size, we wanna keep all of these boards the same size. If we scale it, it's making them fatter than they actually need to be in the real world. Well, what this tool does is this allows us to take the object and instead of stretching the whole thing, it allows us to mouse over a point and then notice how it gives me these target boxes right here. What I can do is I can place this and then this will stretch the object based on that location instead of 
um, stretching or scaling the entire thing. So it's basically picking that point and then it's stretching based on that point. And so this also works with like vertical geometry. So let's say that I wanted to make this taller. I could set this right here and We'll talk more about the from opposite in a second, but notice how I can use this in order to make this whole thing taller without distorting things as well. So this can also be really helpful for things like windows. So if I wanted to take this window, make it wider, you just do the same thing, right? I can just pick that point and then I can scale based on that point or stretch based on that point without getting that additional distortion. Now there is a really cool function in here where if you right click on this object, once you've moused over this, you can do a from center. Well, what the from center is gonna do is that's going to allow you to add two boxes in here. So let's say that I was to drag this this way. Notice how this now gives me two boxes and it's scaling about the center. Well, that's gonna scale this in both directions like this. And so that's a super powerful way of stretching symmetrical objects like this one without causing that deformation. Okay, so this next one allows you to twist an object. And so this is interesting because if you think about twisting an object, right, like this one, if I was to come in here, I could just rotate this object right here, right? But you're not really going to get a very good result because there's no actual geometry in here that allows SketchUp to figure out what should be happening here. So you just get this like funky um, diagonal line. However, what this tool does is it finds this object and it does a twist. So if I click on it, what it's gonna do is notice how I'm getting these little tick marks in here. Those tick marks are showing you the divisions that it's going to create in the geometry. So if I was to click, right, and I was to twist this object, let's say we were to twist it 90 degrees, notice what that does is that actually comes in here, and we'll look at our hidden geometry, it slices that object up, so it creates a number of different slices in here so that your geometric twist actually makes sense. And so one of the cool things about this, and let's go ahead and make a copy, um, one of the cool things about this is if we were to twist this or right click on it, what we can do is we can access the slicing parameters. That's gonna allow us to set the number of slices in here. So if you wanted this to be a smoother result, you could type in a value of like 60. Well, notice what that's gonna do is that's gonna give you a lot more slices. Now you do wanna be careful with this because you don't want to create a ton of extra geometry in here, right? Notice how, let's say we were to run this on this object right here. Let's go ahead and bring this back down to 12. Notice how the geometric detail is very different. And what that means is that means that this has a ton more entities in it, right? This one has 1200 entities in it. This one has 246. So the amount of geometry you create can be a little funky in here, but you can use this in order to do some really cool things. Okay, and so another fun application for this is you can use this on multiple objects. So let's say for example, that we wanted to add four circles like this, and then extrude them up. So we'll go ahead and extrude them to this height. We'll just repeat that extrusion over and over again. Now, if we were to take these objects and we were to twist them like this, notice how we can type in 180 degrees and it's gonna go through and it's gonna slice this up and it's gonna create kind of this, uh, almost like a wire or a cable. Now you do have to be a little bit careful um, with the way that you do that because sometimes you get a little bit of an overlap in your geometry if these are close together, but you can use that to create some more interesting shapes like this one as well. All right, so this next tool, I think that I'm using it right. I'm not 100% sure, but um, the value of this next tool is the scaling box that this object object adds in here. So let's say for example that you've got an object like this one. Um, you, you can't really, I mean you can come in here and you can tap on the rotate tool and you can try to like inference to faces and other things like that. Um, but that can be just a little bit funky especially depending on the direction the faces are going, other things like that. Well what this tool is going to do is it's going to allow you to select this object and it's going to give you a bounding box kind of like the Fredo scale tool does in here. Well what that's going to do is that's going to allow us to come in here and quickly 
do rotations like this one. So if we wanted to like level this object out or something like that, we could definitely do that. And then notice how if I rerun that, that round, that bounding box is going to reorient. So it can be a quick, easy way if you have objects that have been kind of like rotated off axis or something like that, um, you can use this in order to quickly fix that. Now you might have to come back in here and like realign your model axes or something like that, but it can still be a time saver. The other thing is if you have a shape like this one and you want to rotate it about the middle, that can be kind of funky, right? Like trying to find the middle. Um, I mean, you can mouse over the edge of this object and depending on how much you've uh, done to your circle right here, you can kind of find that inference point sometimes. It's a lot faster to just activate this tool. And what that's gonna do is that's gonna give you a bounding box around your entire object, including a reference point in the middle of your object. So what that means is that means you can use that in order to quickly find that middle point or rotate using the corner of an object as well. So what it does is just gives you better inference points in here that you can use in order to rotate objects. So this other one, I don't think I've ever actually used the free rotation um, before. So I'm not 100% sure what we should do with this that we're not already doing with the rotate tool. Now, the one thing that it does do um, is it does give you the ability to set a point or a reference direction in order to rotate an object. So that does give you more control over the points that you're rotating in the 3D space. So if you do need that additional point in here for rotating objects, I suppose this would give you the ability to use that. All right, and then this last tool is my absolute favorite tool inside of Fredo Scale. What it does is it allows you to select an object and give it a bend along a curve. So let's say, for example, that we were to select this object right here and we want to bend it 180 degrees. Well, what you can do is you can activate radial bend and it's going to give you the ability to um, select a point. So in this case, right, I would select like this green direction right here and you can set a reference direction. You can set a target point and then you can give it an angle. So if I was to type in 180 degrees, what that's gonna do is that's gonna bend this object along that angle. But there's a ton of different applications for being able to come in here and bend objects. Right, So we can bend this 45 degrees, 90 degrees, whatever we want. And so one of the cool things about this is it gives me the ability to do a partial bend of an object. So let's say for example that I only wanted to bend half of this, I would set my reference direction to the midpoint and I would set my target point right here. Now if I type in a value of 45 degrees and hit enter, notice how it's going to bend this but only up into that point right there. So then I could come back in here and I could take this object again. And in this case, I could bend the other half of it, right? So I could come in here and click and then bend this back down negative 90 degrees or whatever I want. Now you do need to be a little bit careful in here because this can create some geometric issues. Um, so a lot of that has to do with like the size of the object that's been created, other things like that. A lot of the time you can just come back in here and just kind of fill those in manually. Um, sometimes you can't, you might need to use like a soap skin and bubble or a curve aloft or something in order to fill in the gaps, but still having the ability to do multiple bends and do object deformation like this could be extremely valuable. So in my opinion, Fredo's tools are some of the best tools for SketchUp. I love Fredo Scale and the functions that it adds. I'd love to hear from you in the comments down below. What do you think about Fredo Scale? I just love having that conversation with you guys. I will link to my ultimate guide to SketchUp extensions on this page. And as always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.